Just now on the Deseret First Credit Union Hotline, our second guest of the day, one of our program favorites, head volleyball coach of what we think is going to be the number one team in America, Sean Olmstead. Sean, we want to begin today by rolling out our stat of the day. It's the BYU Sports <laughs> Nation stat of the day. Sean Olmstead ran up and down Tippinogas twice Friday night. Was it, it was Friday night? Friday or was night? was it last night? Or was it last night, Sean? No, it was, it was Friday night. Yeah, Friday night, the third, and finished uh, about, got back at home 4.30 in the morning on uh, July 4th. Okay, you ran 100 miles as well, like in a day. Can you, t can you tell us, like, mentally what it takes to do that? Because we have questions, we have concerns, we have respect, we have a lot of feelings, Sean. <laughs> No, I just, that's the part I enjoy is being able to push beyond kind of the, the physical discomfort and, and, and mentally being able to just push myself beyond what would be, you know, comfortable or what we would consider comfortable. And that's, uh, that's why I continue to kind of go back and to search for more. And uh, probably within the next week, I'm going to, I'm going to go up to uh, three times in a row. So that's my next little thing I'm going to knock off the list. And so uh, I'll keep you guys posted. And every time I get up there, I send a text to Chad Lewis and Tom Homo. All right, round number one. And then, you know, round number two at 1.30 in the morning up there uh, with my lights on and, and my dog with me. Is the cell service good at the top of Temp? Yeah, it's super good at the top of Temp. So if you want me to FaceTime you, Jeremy, I, I, I can FaceTime <laughs> do, do it, please. No matter what time it is, okay. see if I answer. I'm, okay. I'm dead serious. Do I'll it. do that. Hey, Sean, okay. if you'd like to expend some more energy and uh, help a guy out, I've got a rock wall in the backyard of the new house that I'm hoping to get into. So That's not um, enough running. C c come on over and use those muscles yeah. to move the rocks out of the way. No, and that's what I don't have is the muscles. I've got I've got kind of the heart and just uh, the the will up here, and I just keep going. I put it in kind of a low gear and just find my find my forever pace and keep moving. Sean Olmsted with us on BYU Sports Nation. Okay, uh, your accomplishments aside, and they continue to we, grow. We could just go the whole segment on that, but <laughs> let's talk volleyball. Yeah. Yeah. Let's talk no, about let's your talk, team. Let's talk volleyball. Sure. Yeah. Volleyballmag.com uh, ranks your recruiting class number 10 in the nation. BYU has a history of overachieving. While you might not have the number one class every year, you find yourself near the top of the polls every year. What's the secret to success, and why is this class uh, going to keep you near the top? Yeah, we're really, really, really excited about this class, actually. And, um, you know, the uh, I think we all understand how those those rankings come about. And and in, in my opinion, we've got a, a handful of talented kids. Um, you know, some of them haven't been playing volleyball as long as other recruits. But each one of them, you know, come from really, really good backgrounds, uh, are excited to be at BYU and work hard. And I think that's what BYU has always done is we've been able to find those kids that in a way fly under the radar, that are going to grow, that are going to learn our systems, that are going to get stronger, that are going to be in our gym and get that experience in the competition with the guys we have. And, and from there, they're going to flourish. And, and we've seen that. We've seen that every year. You know, Zach Eschenberg this year is a perfect example of that. You know, he, he wouldn't have been – uh, blowing up all the rank recruiting sites and, and, and the rankings. But that's a kid that came in, believed in what we were talking about, you know, good background, worked hard and, and accomplished, has accomplished great things. And fortunately for us, he's coming back and, and going to accomplish more. So that's how we look at this class as well. We like the numbers. And uh, I think there's some good physical strong kids that uh, are young in the sport and, and they're going to learn through trial and error, but we're going to put them in a good place to, to learn and grow. BYU volleyball reminds me of BYU football in the eighties in that freshmen, if maybe one makes an impact because you've developed the upper class to where there's this nice rhythm, right? You're not dependent on freshmen a ton. Davide Gardini, perhaps an exception, you know, two years ago or whatever, but that that's awesome. So let's talk about a couple of these guys that could make an impact next year and we'll definitely see an impact in the next couple of years. So let's start with Zio Meyer. This is a setter out of Wheaton, Illinois. Lefty that goes on to a ton and, and he can whip it. Yeah, yeah, uh, really good arm from the service line. Uh, as of right now, he's going to learn. You know, he's going to learn uh, when to get after it. But when he wants, when he gets a hold of it, uh, he he can hit the ball just as well as the the rest of our team and, and that we have right now currently from the service line. He can really get a hold of it. He's, he is a lefty, 
Uh, I like his creativity. You know, we're going to, we're going to get him into our system, teach him. But the one thing we've encouraged with him is we, we want him to play the game the way that he enjoys it, you know, and, and that's going to be also kind of a learning curve, you know, uh, how to run our offense. And so it's exciting that Will is actually coming back and Zio has been excited about that, you know, cause it went from, uh, a different group of setters that we would have had in the gym. Now we've got Will, uh, where we, you know, Will can kind of be there as a mentor for Zio, but that's a kid that we've been watching and recruiting for years now. And, and he's become an all American. Uh, he's played out a uh, club in California, moved out there and played a whole year uh, of Southern California club volleyball. Now he's back in Chicago. And so it's a kid that, uh, you guys are going to really, really enjoy watching a good, good feel for the game confident too which I like a lot, and uh, so we're really excited about him. Sean, how typical is it that you spend multiple years on a recruit like you did with Zio, who's in Wheaton, Illinois, of all places? So, I mean, is this the norm, or is he a guy that uh, it was special and you've been watching him for a while? Yeah, no, I mean, we begin watching these kids like every sport, you know, from a young age because they're playing in these organized club events that are have, have grown from – you know, certain locations to these national events. So you begin to see them in sometimes seventh and eighth grade and you're recruiting them. And if you look at, you look at some of the other sports like women's volleyball, they're getting commitments from kids as young as, you know, freshmen in high school, you know, that, that, that doesn't happen as frequently with men's volleyball, but we've kept an eye on these kids. And, and most of our recruits have been, especially in this class are kids that we've been watching for a couple of years. Uh, and then, of course, you target the ones that way we really need. We need these guys to make an impact on our program, kind of like going after a big time quarterback, you know. And so depending on the position and the needs, you know, that's kind of how we've narrowed things down. Did you feel like with this class that you had a major need you needed to fill, given that you're having a lot of the pieces come back next year? No, we felt like we wanted to get the best kind of mix of volleyball players. So. You know, before before everything happened, yes, we had a we had a major emphasis in the setting position, of course. Um, but we felt like we needed to get uh, kind of just a mix of good volleyball players because we did, like you explained, Jerem, in terms of the older guys. We had guys that would have been on our roster still. You know, the Gabby, the Davide, and so getting some some guys in those positions and opposite and outside, those guys would be able to develop, be able to learn from the older guys. So. Uh, kind of both both ways, but then the the pandemic hit, and so it changed the dynamics of things a little bit. But yeah, a big focus for us in this class was was the setter position for sure, right off the bat. Sean, let's finish with this. You bring up the pandemic. What type of contingencies are you planning on uh, because volleyball starts in the middle of the winter in in January? What what type of things are you preparing for? You know, right now we're working right now directly. I was on the phone this morning with our, our international students just to keep them, keep them in the loop, you know, keep that, that open lines of communication. That's really, really important right now, especially kind of all those moving parts there. And then, and then what we're seeing across the country is, uh, uh, especially in our sport right now, because we still are, uh, you know, five, six months away there's still a lot of hesitancy in terms of commitments uh, uh, of matches of games, just because there's so much un unknown. And as you guys know, I mean, this is a fluid the, the constantly changing every day. <laughs> and, and right now we're waiting to see what the Ivy league does. And when the Ivy league says what they're going to do, you know, what does that do for the rest of the country? How do the, how do the other presidents of universities react? And so, I truly believe we've got great leadership in Tom and Brian and Liz that, and up to the president and the new vice president that really have been great uh, communicating with us and, you know, kind of taking it upon themselves to be at the forefront of everything and, and letting us know how things evolve on the daily. I now know why your mental faculties are pushing you to run up and down Tippinogas twice in one night to keep from going crazy in COVID-19. <laughs> no, yeah. Yeah, that probably could be true. <laughs> Sean, we're excited about your team, and uh, it's always great to talk to you, man. Stay healthy. We'll talk again soon. All right. I always enjoy chatting with you guys. Thank you very much. See you on you FaceTime. Sean Holmstead on the Deseret First Credit Union. Hotline Deseret First. You know why we show how. Price